So guys, yes, we are here with this 2023 Lexus ES300H F Sport handling. Now I know the name might be a mouthful, but I've had this Lexus for the past week now, and it's really cool ultrasonic blue mica 2.0 paint, which is exclusive to the F Sport line. Now I wanted to have a conversation with you guys really quickly. Now normally I'm a big proponent of having sportier vehicles, vehicles that are fun to drive, and like we just went over, this one has the F-Sport handling package. And of course, I get to adapt the dampers, which you can switch from comfort to sport um, in the Sport Plus mode. But this is a luxury car. It's a hybrid. And I think this might be one of the first instances where I kind of wish I was able to test out the one without the adaptive dampers. As I've been told by owners so far that it's really, really comfortable. And you know, this is still pretty comfortable. It's pretty quiet. But even in the comfort setting, I think it might be a little too on the sniffer side for this kind of vehicle. Now, I'm not saying it's bad, but I think I actually want the really comfortable soft one for this time around. And it's a pretty interesting vehicle. Now, if you don't know the Lexus ES, this is its seventh generation it's been on this earth so far. And this is the most recent version. They came out in 2018, and we are now obviously in 2023. So 2023 has received a few updates, mainly to the interior. And there was a early facelift a few years ago. But the ES is kind of a unique one where it offers these range of hybrid powertrains. You have the 300 hybrid, you can get it with the V6 and the 350, or you can get it in all wheel drive, but that only comes with a smaller engine and the ES 250. Now the ES comes in, of course, 250, 300H and 350, and you can get it in ultra luxury, F Sport styling, and then this newer, more exclusive F Sport handling package. So, what are you gonna really getting with this F Sport handling package? Well, it builds off of the F Sport styling package, and that already is gonna give you some a few things. So, up front, we're gonna have the more aggressive front fascia from Lexus. You get kind of like this dark out um, spindle glow right here with this more aggressive mesh design. You can kind of see the L-shaped pattern going on in the grill, which is actually quite nice. You also kind of get this kind of brushed dark chrome trim around the spindle grill and around the front of the exterior as well. It has a really nice accented touch to it. We also get a more aggressive bumper with these black side air intakes, which are pretty nice. Of course, you can't forget the F-Sport badge on the side of the Lexus as well as these really nice side mirrors with a dual tone paint finish and this nice aluminum strip or metal finish strip going across. You have bright chrome work around the side of the, L the ES. You're also gonna get this rear integrated lip spoiler on the trunk. Some more of that dark chrome finish as well down there as well. And you're also gonna be getting these black 19 inch wheels, which again are exclusive to the F Sport lineup. Pretty nice. And we also are riding on Michelin rubber. Nothing too aggressive though. And this one comes often with the really, really nice looking triple beam LED headlights, which I think are a necessity option. I think they're like $1,300 as a package. They look really, really nice. I think they really enhance the um, luxury and exclusiveness of the ES lineup. Now, most of the stuff I mentioned so far can actually be had on the ES without the handling package. So what is the handling package getting you? Well, under the skin, we actually now have adaptive dampers. And these dampers can be kind of switched between a soft and a more sportier setting, which stiffens up the dampers. And supposedly it's supposed to stiffen up the chassis and kind of make it a little bit more sporty. And I think Lexus kind of introduced this package to kind of appeal to, I guess, a wider um, buyer base. I guess maybe younger buyers that see us for and handling in the name, they're like, oh, this might be more interesting to me. I'm really genuinely curious to try one out in either like an ultra luxury or just a regular luxury one with the regular suspension to see how much more comfortable and smoother that one is. Nonetheless, I do actually really enjoy this car for what it is as a cruising car. It's not something that's gonna engage you. It's not something that's gonna really stimulate your senses in that essence, but as like a comfortable cruising luxury sedan, I think it's still a pretty unique offering in the segment, especially if you wanna get up to like 44 miles to the gallon, because I've been driving around and getting 40 miles to the gallon of this, and that is pretty impressive. So let's dive in a little bit more on the interior. I'm gonna show you why this is actually really comfortable inside as well. Okay guys, now getting inside of the ES, of course you have multiple ways to do that. Now I consider a real luxury car, a car that has all four doors that have keyless access um, touch sensors on it. And this one has that. Of course you have your Lexus key fob right here, which is actually quite nice. Um, you can use all these different various functions on it. But like I said, it is keyless. So I can just walk up to the door and open it up like this. 
awesome. And this one has the circuit red interior, so it is quite flashy. You can also get it in black. And since we are in the F Sport package, we are getting a more aggressive seat. So we have a little bit more bolstering on the seat than you would get in a normal ES. And I actually quite find them very comfortable. We also have the F Sport badging on embossed into the headrest, which is really nice. You also get an F Sport styled steering wheel. And as I'll show you guys in a second, you also get those gauges inspired by the, L um, the old LFA, which kind of move, move around, but we'll dive in that when I get fully in the interior. On the door panels, we have a really, really nice design going over here with this red leather. We have this beautiful aluminum trim, Luxus calls the Hendori aluminum trim. It's inspired by Japanese sword crafting, which is really, really cool. And it is very real aluminum, and it has this really nice kind of streaked pattern going into it, which is really beautiful. And that carries around through the entire dash of the interior as well, which I think is fantastic. And I love these door handles that Lexus kind of introduced on the LC500 recently, and they're kind of like this floating pattern, really nice. And even the inside of the door handle is kind of this felt lined material, really premium stuff. And I love how Lexus kind of minimized the use of gloss black. This is really like one of the only few places you're gonna find it. This is kind of like this other um, plastic material, which feels actually quite nice, but isn't um, fingerprint prone like the gloss of black plastic is. And one of my favorite features are actually are these aluminum side sills that illuminate blue, the Lexus logo. You guys can kind of see that in the daytime right now. It looks a lot cooler at night. You also got aluminum paddles, which are really cool, and the F Sport ES carpeting. Let's dive in into the back of the interior first, because this is a luxury car at the end of the day. And people are gonna wanna sit back here. So let's go see what this is like right now. Okay guys, getting into the rear of the ES. Now I have my front seat in my driving position. Pretty nice solid door thunk. And I have to say, there's actually quite a lot of legroom back here. I could probably put this seat up a little bit more. I was just sitting a little bit further back, um, but it is quite nice. You can see the seats are really, really well made. I have to say, these seats are super premium feeling and I love the build of them as well. They feel very kind of bespoke to the F series models. You also have these little storage cubbies back here, which are quite nice. Um, foot room could be a little bit better, but the knee room is fantastic. And as you can see, if you're sitting in a more normal driving position to the right, I guess for a passenger position, you have way more room. You do have climate vents, um, two USB-C chargers right here, which is kind of nice, and a 120 watt, 12 volt power charger right there. The seats themselves are perforated, but again, no heating or cooling functions back here, which I kind of wish they had. This is like a $54,000 spec, and it is missing some key, few key options. You do get this um, leather wrap center console, which you have cup holders right here, which is pretty nice, and a ski pass through into the massive, massive trunk, which we'll look at that right after these rear seats. Headroom is pretty, pretty okay. So I, I can actually put my head completely back in the seats. I have like about an inch left of headroom which isn't bad i just feel a little bit higher when you're sitting back here i think because the hybrid batteries are right below where we're sitting um but there is a panoramic roof option this one doesn't have it unfortunately but you do have some rear lighting back here which is pretty nice helps to keep the um rear a little bit more illuminated but i don't think it's too dark back here so that's not really an issue um nonetheless it is a pretty nice and comfortable space and you get a little bit of a peak of up front, which actually is a pretty, pretty nice space to be in. And let's go take a tour of that right now, because since this is a 2023, we're getting this all new Lexus entertainment system up here. And I have a lot to say about it. So let's go dive into that right now. And just before I forget, we have to take a look at the trunk space, of course. And this has a massive trunk. Lexus actually packaged the batteries in a way where they're able to kind of maximize trunk space. So they wouldn't kind of um, <laughs> intrude in that. So you have a lot of space. I believe this actually is a bigger trunk than the Volvo S90 which has with a bigger vehicle in general has more leg room but i think it kind of sacrifices on the trunk space now that we just got to look at the trunk space really quickly let's go hop up to the front of the interior to give you guys a quick look of that okay guys let's hop in the front seats now because I, I actually quite like them a lot so we always took a look at the door panels and most of the interior so let's hop right in and off the bat it is really quiet in here you can already hear how this interior kind of drowns out all the noise, and that's thanks to this acoustic glass. And we also have like double ceiling on the doors and some nice insulation on the doors. So Lexus kind of paid attention to this cabin to really make sure it was a luxurious experience. And it is quite nice in here. We have, again, we have that circuit red leather and these really nice, comfortable and bolstered 
Lexus sports seats. Now, I do have to say, if you are a little bit of a bigger person, these seats might be a little uncomfortable as they do offer more bolstering. You can see on the side right here, a little bit of that raised bolster as well as they do hug you quite well on the sides. And these are not adjustable. So if you don't want that, I would definitely go for the non-F sport trims. That might be a better offering for you. So let's start up the ES and that actually is a power button because this is a hybrid. <laughs> so it's kind of cool. So it always starts up in like this EV type mode, which is really interesting. And I love the startup animation on the dash. Kind of like explodes into this Lexus logo as well as in the entertainment system. For 2023, Lexus has finally gotten rid of their horrible, <laughs> sorry, Lexus, um, remote touch interface which just kind of had like this weird mouse pad thing and then there was kind of like before that this other kind of like dial you would move around no one really liked it it was kind of annoying and finicky to use now instead we have this absolutely massive um 12 i think 12.3 inch touchscreen display right here so it's actually pretty good we have our mapping controls right here as you can see we have our audio controls we have our phone controls and we have vehicle controls. And since this is a hybrid, you can see your energy flow for the different systems in the car. So we have our battery level, we have our engine and the ECVT and all the stuff that kind of works throughout there. But at the end of the day, it's pretty basic. Some Bluetooth devices, we have our general information, we have personal info, and you do have wireless CarPlay and Android Auto, which is pretty nice. And that is even better with this wireless charging mat down here, which is actually kind of grippy, which is kind of cool. And it will alert you on the infotainment system if it's not connecting or if there's some kind of issue with that, which I actually quite like a lot. Now we do have a regular gear shifter, which is really nicely crafted in perforated leather. It actually feels very premium. You have this kind of leather boot over it as well. And it is an ECVT, which does have a sport mode because we're on the F Sport, and you can make Manually, I guess, select those gear ratios if you wanted to. We also have paddle shifters to do that, but I don't think that's a necessity in this car. And like I said, just recently we have heated, cooled seats as well as a heated steering wheel, a two-stage heated steering wheel, and auto function, which is pretty cool. And climate controls right here, like I said, work pretty well. Um, now, there is an issue I have noticed. So this is a brand new display, right? And it works fine. I haven't had an issue with this yet. You also have a voice assistant, so I can say, hey, Lexus, turn on the climate control. Sometimes it works. Hey, Lexus, turn on the climate control. Turning on AC. Okay, so that's pretty cool. It's pretty like a common thing you're gonna find in a lot of new um, cars these days. So it works okay. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't hear you all the time. Now, the one thing I have noticed is that this is a new display. This is not a new display. And although I do love this screen, it's really cool. And you can only get this one on the F Sport models because it's kind of like a sportier display it moves like this like the old lfa and that's where the inspiration comes from but i just feel like the graphics do not match up on these two i'm gonna i'm trying to find like a good example of this i think the fonts are similar but i just feel like the, the fonts don't match up and some of the graphics and the animations just don't match up so if, for example if i go to the vehicle settings and go to energy flow really beautiful crisp new energy flow chart and i go to the energy flow chart here and it's this tiny pixelated little icons that look like they're from like the early 2000s it's just one thing that kind of bugged me a little bit you do get over it really quickly because i do actually quite like this um it does display quite a lot of information but you would have even more information if you had the optional heads of display which this one does not have optioned and i also mentioned this previously this one does not have the optional mark levinson audio system which i really is a bummer which i really wish i had because i'm not a big fan of the space audio system it kind of sounds uh <laughs> like almost economy car like i was just in a mazda 3 with the upgraded bow system and that actually sounded better so i wish i was able to test out the mark levinson system but unfortunately this one does not have it now like I mentioned before, we are in the F Sport handling package. So that gets us an extra drive mode up here called Sport Plus. And that's how you can adjust your dampers into the stiffer setting or in the normal eco setting. And when you do this, you get this really cool animations in the display. So that's Sport Mode. And then you have the um, a special Sport Plus mode, which gives you this really nice tachometer and center display. You can also push it for normal or custom mode, which you can set up in the entertainment system. And you can go down to eco mode, which is actually what I've been driving it in a lot frequently, which is pretty interesting. You also have a quick toggle for your traction control right there if you wanted to turn that off at any time. I actually quite like the steering wheel. It's very comfortable. The leather feels really nice and the heated steering um, option looks re works really, really well. And that heats up the whole steering wheel, not just the sides. 
And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it for this interior. It's a nice space. It's a comfortable space. Um, it feels premium. It does feel like an elevated experience. It's very quiet in here, but let's take it on a drive. Now this is the ES300H, so it's the hybrid. We have a two and a half liter four cylinder up front with a electric motor paired to a lithium ion battery pack. We have an eCVT um, transmission. We have a full EV mode, which actually allows you to drive, I think up to 20 miles an hour in complete battery power if you have enough battery power on you you can check that here if you need to go to the energy monitor you can also look at that in the main display which is pretty cool we also have um, an adaptive suspension so we have eco mode we have a sport mode which just gives you a little bit more revs from the engine and we have a sport plus mode which activates the stiffer suspension setup so those are your different kind of driving modes here. And this one is very fuel efficient. I've been getting around 40 miles to the gallon. I think you can do up to around 44 can get, which is pretty impressive. Put it into, I guess drive is pretty simple. And you can hear right now that the engine is on because I think the battery needs to be charged a little bit. So it thinks it needs to charge up the battery. So that's why the engine turned on. But that process is very, very seamless and smooth. I want to try going into EV mode for you guys right now. So I don't know if it has enough battery to go into EV mode. So we might do that a little bit. But when you're in eco mode, let's go through the drive modes really quickly. Um, it is going to prioritize a regenerative braking. And you kind of get this little gauge right here that gives you eco, where it'll normally operate in, under battery power mostly. And then power mode, which will kind of do the hybrid setting where you get both the engine and the battery. Um, you also have a little regen chart over there, which is pretty nice. So it kind of shows you um, how much energy you're putting back into the battery. So going down this hill right now, you can see we're putting energy back into the battery, charging it up. And it does charge actually pretty quickly. You kind of view that status right here as well, which I think is pretty cool. Now we're in comfort dampers right now, and I'm not going to lie. It is a little, I think, too stiff for this vehicle, even in the comfort dampers. It's not bad in here. It's not annoying. And I think generally most people won't care too much. But if you do drive, I guess, an ultra luxury or a luxury one with the regular um, dampers on it or that are not adaptive, I think I've heard from owners that it's actually more comfortable than this handling package. Um, now you can pop it into Sport Plus, which will stiffen them up even more. And you do feel it. You definitely do notice it in the steering wheel. You can feel the front end tighten up a little bit. Um, so there is something going on and I don't even think it's, there's worth it to do zero to 60 in this cause it's a hybrid as like 215 horsepower. <laughs> you do have power if you need it. You hear that CVT whine along all day and yeah, it, it's not a performance car. So it's not meant to be treated like that at all. But in this Sport Plus mode, you do have, again, that stiffer suspension setup, which is really nice. And I think Lexus did a pretty good job with it. Again, these adaptive dampers do kind of help a little bit <laughs> if you want to, like, I guess, have a little more control of the chassis. But it's not like a performance chassis. Under the skin, we're having like mostly stamped steel bits even for the suspension and the chassis itself. Again, it's not like a full-on ground-up luxury-built platform. Lexus kind of took this platform, um, TNGAK, which is, you know, found the Avalon, a lot of like regular Toyota products and made it luxurious. And it is, it does a good job at that being very comfortable. It's kind of on the softer side of tuning for everything. Everything has like this really nice, like a little smooth, um, refined feel to it rather than I think like a solid vault like feel you're going to get out of, I guess, German cars. Um, and if you do, again, like I said, if you do need the acceleration, it is there. Let's get over really quickly onto the highway. So like I said, acceleration is there if you need it. And you can take off like that. But I won't lie, I have mostly been driving this actually in eco mode. A, for both the fuel economy, which is pretty impressive in this thing. And I, it's just a more luxurious and relaxing experience. The dampers soften up a little bit and I think it's actually quite comfortable. Now, while we're on the highway, I do wanna kind of highlight this Lexus Safety System 2.0 that they have built into this car. And it's all kind of accessible from this right side of the steering wheel. And you literally just press this button radar cruise active press set and you're off you have distance control you have three stages of distance control you can adjust your speed with these buttons right here 
and it does have um, lane keep assist so it's flashing right now and you can turn that off and on with this little button and it does steer and so some of these cars that i've been in only kind of like do auto steering as it's called up to like a certain mile per hour range um and some just kind of like bump you in and out of the lanes this one full-on will steer you see we're going around a corner you're not supposed to take your hands off the wheel don't <laughs> don't recommend that but um it's also illegal but um it does do it so you can see that it is actively um, steering you, which is pretty cool. And it will start beeping at you if you, it notices you're not, uh, have your hands on the wheel. So I do like that. And it, it, it works really, really well, actually. My only complaint with it is that, let's say there's a car in front of you. Unfortunately, I, I, mean, I guess fortunately, unfortunately, there's no traffic right now, so I can't really show you this. But when there's a car in front of you and it starts accelerating and it, it, you want to meet your target speed, it actually has a kind of a hard time doing that. It, it kind of keeps it below that speed. And even with the closest distance on your um, distance control, it stays really, really far back. And I guess that's a good safety feature. Oh, that's really dangerous. Um, sorry for those people. Obviously it's a safety style feature. It wants to be safe in traffic. Doesn't want to be like over accelerating and stuff. But I've noticed that in like some slower moving, like stop and go traffic it doesn't accelerate quickly enough so you'll find like traffic around you has gone all the way up ahead and you're like still slowly catching up and so i thought it was like a drive mode thing so i put it into sport 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 plus and it still did the same thing so i don't know if i like that too much i wish like there was more like a, a following type distance that was a little bit more aggressive as you can see right now we have the we have the shortest following distance it's gonna start beeping at me now um we have the shortest following distance i believe right now now we do and I have to have it set to 72, 75. And it takes its time. It's a very gradual increase up to like that speed. So like it or hate it, that's one thing I've just noticed with this driving experience. This engine actually is pretty nice. Um, it's very, very smooth. It's a two and a half liter four cylinder, very, very smooth engine. And I haven't had any really complaints with it. It kicks in when you need to, and it's very quiet and I guess non-intrusive when you don't want it there. And it kind of like shuts on and off seamlessly with this hybrid system integrated, which I actually find really nice. And that's kind of Toyota and Lexus's really big hallmark. Their hybrid systems have been around for decades now, and they're really refined and fantastic. And I think when you're driving this thing and like this really true pure eco or even just normal driving modes, I think kind of that's where this car comes to shine. It's just really smooth and refined, definitely around town. And I actually really like how there's three ESs actually right there that just drove by. Pretty popular. Um, it's just a really smooth, smooth vehicle um, around town. And, and again, you're getting that fuel economy in there. I think we have enough charge in the battery now that we can probably pop it into EV mode. Let's see what happens. Yep, we're in EV mode. So you can kind of hear that EV whir, and the second I push harder on the gas pedal, EV mode deactivated, it is now into gas mode. So you can only go so far in EV mode, because the battery doesn't hold too much, so we kind of lost like one cell right there of it's that charging status. But yeah, that's the driving experience of the ES. It's a comfortable cruiser. I think that's its, its main highlights. And I've been saying this a lot throughout these videos. I, I really would like to try this in the ultra luxury um, package versus this kind of F Sport handling package. And I really do. I do love the design of the, the outside. It looks really cool in the F Sport package. I really love the optional triple LED beam headlights. And um, I love this interior. It's fantastic. But I just kind of wish for this kind of car it's not designed from the ground up to be kind of like sporty it's kind of was like retrofitted to be like this i really do want to try what it would be like in these softer softer um standard suspension and one other complaint before i end this drive is this one does not have the optional upgraded backup cameras and this backup camera is so disappointing for a car that costs 54,000. Look at this. Short has trajectory, but it's this really kind of crop display. It isn't high resolution either. Um, and the, you, again, you can option a full panorama view camera, but it doesn't have it like for this much money. I think that should be standard on these cars. Uh, again, one last complaint, <laughs> but 
I guess I'm going to sum up the driving experience right here with the ES. It's, it's comfortable. It's a comfortable cruiser, and I really do respect it for that. Um, it's not for everyone, and I think this is a, a weirdly unique niche segment. Um, but Lexus still sells a whole bunch of these. They're selling around like 45,000 a year. And th those numbers have been pretty consistent over the past like 10 years, actually. Um, so I'm looking forward to see what Lexus does with the ES in the future. Is it going to go EV? Is it going to be hybrid only? We're going to find out really soon. I think a new version is going to be coming up. It's been on the market for around four to five years now. So yeah, let's get excited for a new ES maybe and see what Lexus is coming out with in the future. Thank you guys for joining me on this review and drive of the Lexus ES 300H of Sport. And stay tuned for a lot more stuff coming from all car news real soon. Cheers.